In 1936, the hours were fairly normal, 30 or 40-hour week, with an income of $35 a week with a PhD in physics back of it. And that's typical of the schedules in those days of the finances. But Alan and I were busy building cathode ray tubes. And one of our assignments that we set for ourselves was to take these instruments out to schools and teach professors, teach university professors and high school teachers the use of cathode ray oscillographs. One of the scopes is out there in my lab in the other room. And we would do that as an introduction for two purposes. Number one, so that when those students got out of school, they would want Dumont Laboratories scientific instruments to use in their electronics research and developments and inventions. The second thing we were saying, this someday will be a device called television. We weren't demonstrating television at the start, but uh, in 1931, he got basic patents on cathode ray tubes to such a degree that between 31 and 41, he had a patent backlog, which we later negotiated with David Sarnoff and the Radio Corporation mm -hmm. of America. So we're developing not only um, instruments that can see sound waves mm -hmm. on a picture tube, but uh, radar systems and uh, all kinds of electronic devices for medical applications, things of that sort. So this work was being done in the little hat shop, when I first started with him, we took on all three of those little buildings and ran out of space. My brother Basil Manley Goldsmith joined me at that time and um, also worked at Dumont in the tube division and helping with cathode ray tubes, building cathode ray tubes. But Alan Dumont and uh, Dave Sarnoff knew each other very well from their radio backgrounds, and RCA had licensed Alan Dumont on patents. So Alan had developed a device called the Magic Eye Tube. It's a little cathode ray tube about this size with a little pattern that would move back and forth with voltage. It measured the voltage. It was a tuning device. When you tune a radio or tune a television set, you could tune it to the maximum signal by watching that little magic eye tube. Well, that was a form of cathode ray tube. So Dave Sarnoff told Alan, said, I'd like to have a license under that patent. Would you let me have a patent license? Alan said, yes. And so Dave said, would you take 19750 for a permanent license on this and still have Dumont keep the rights to use it for our own things? We use it in cathode ray and in television sets later on. So we bought, sold that patent to Dave Sarnoff. He said, if I have to pay more than that, I have to go to the board of directors. So please, let's have it for $19,750. Well, with that patent income, we bought the Anna Myers Pure Food um, building over in Passaic, New Jersey, near Montclair. It was a pickle and factory, wasn't it? It was a manufacturing plant. It had been pickle works. Yeah. So we took all the pickle <laughs> barrels out of the yards and whatnot and, and set up the research laboratory in the basement, tube manufacturing in the main floor in Dr. Mont's office, and electronics manufacturing in the Top floor, that three-story building. Now, was this 6, a 6,000 square feet each. This was around 1937. 1937. So we moved over there, and we also put two antennas on top of the building, put a transmitter for pictures, a transmitter for sound, and started the television broadcasting in Passaic at the start. Later, we moved into 515 Madison Avenue in New York and put in a regular broadcast station, which is now Channel 5 in New York. 